economic issues to political clashes, things have taken several wrong turns in Africa throughout history. But one of the most crucial aspects of it has been how so many presidents have been assassinated in the worst ways possible. In this video, we will take a look at the presidents who were assassinated in the most dangerous ways in Africa. Without any further ado, let's get started. Ahmed Abdallah Abderrahmane. Ahmed Abdallah Abderrahmane, the first president of Comoros, met a tragic end on November 26, 1989, when he was assassinated by gunshot. He had been deeply involved in Comorian politics since the 1940s, serving as the president of the General Council and later as the chairman of the Chamber of Deputies during the 1970s. His political journey faced ups and downs, including being overthrown in 1975 after the islands gained independence from France. Abdallah returned to power in 1978 after a coup orchestrated by a mercenary named Bob Denard. However, he operated more as a figurehead, with Denard effectively controlling the country. Under Abdallah's rule, the Comoros became a one-party state, marked by the abolition of opposition parties and increasing dictatorial tendencies. However, this couldn't go on forever. The turning point came on November 26, 1989, when Abdallah was shot dead in his Moroni office. Before this, he had survived three coup attempts, but this one got him. The circumstances surrounding his assassination remain highly disputed, with strong beliefs that Dinar orchestrated it to prevent his dismissal as the commander of the Presidential Guard. Denard's trial in 1999 failed to establish conclusive evidence, and he was acquitted. Mohamed Boudiaf Mohamed Boudiaf was an influential Algerian political figure and a key founder of the National Liberation Front, FLN. He met a tragic end, too, and was assassinated on June 29, 1992. Boudiaf's early years in politics saw him deeply involved in the nationalist movement, working with the Parti du Peuple Algérien and later joining the Organisation Speciale, which was a paramilitary wing. In fact, despite facing a 10-year prison sentence by French authorities, he continued his involvement and survived an assassination attempt in 1954. The FLN, born out of the Kiarue, led a nationwide armed insurrection against France in 1954, with Boudiaf emerging as a significant leader. He endured capture and imprisonment until Algeria gained independence in 1962. Post-independence, internal conflicts within the FLN led to its split, and Boudiaf, now marginalized, founded the opposition party PRS. Forced into exile and settling in Morocco, he continued his opposition against successive Algerian governments. In 1992, after 27 years of exile, Boudiaf returned to Algeria at the military's invitation to become the chairman of the High Council of State. Despite his promises of comprehensive reform and an end to military domination, his tenure faced challenges amid civil unrest. And finally, on June 29, 1992, during a televised public speech in Annaba, Boudiaf was assassinated by a bodyguard, Lieutenant Lambarek Boumarafi. The motives behind the assassination have sparked controversy, with some alleging involvement from the military establishment due to Boudiaf's anti-corruption initiatives. Abdallah Isaac Diro. Abdallah Isaac Diro was a Somali politician who held key positions in the country's transitional governments for many years. He served as the first Speaker of Parliament in the transitional national government from 2000 to 2003, and later became the Minister of Constitutional and Federal Affairs in the transitional federal government. However, his political career was shadowed by his involvement in various peace conferences and the turbulent politics of post-conflict Somalia. Diro represented his clan at the 2000 Somalia National Peace Conference in Djibouti, 
He was elected as the Speaker of Parliament in the TNG on August 20, 2000, presiding over the election of Abdi Qasim Salad Hassan as TNG President at the Djibouti Conference. Tragically, on July 28, 2006, after leaving Friday prayers at a mosque in Baidoa, the temporary seat of the TFG, Dero, was assassinated by a lone gunman. The killing sparked riots in the city streets, leading to a security crackdown by authorities. Samuel Doe. In 1990, Samuel Doe, the former president of Liberia, faced a brutal end. During the first Liberian civil war, he was captured by rebel forces led by Prince Y. Johnson on September 9, 1990. Doe had been invited to the Ecomog headquarters for a meeting, supposedly safe from rebel threats. However, the circumstances took a sad turn when rebel forces surprised everyone, arriving unexpectedly and heavily armed. The capture occurred during a change in guard duty from the well-equipped Nigerian peacekeepers to a less prepared Gambian contingent. Johnson's forces overpowered Doe's lightly armed team, disarming and eventually killing them. Despite the assurances of safety, Doe found himself in a perilous situation. To make sure that any supernatural powers did not protect Doe, Johnson ordered the cutting off of Doe's ears in a gruesome act of brutality. Doe was shackled and his torture continued with the amputation of fingers and toes. After enduring 12 hours of agony, Doe was ultimately murdered. His corpse, with a shaved head, was displayed naked on the streets of Monrovia, and the horrifying spectacle was recorded on video later broadcast on news reports. Peter Gatkoth. Peter Gatkoth was a South Sudanese politician who served as the third president of the High Executive Council of the Southern Sudan Autonomous Region from July 12, 1979 to May 30, 1980. Sadly, his life was cut short when he was shot dead by Sergeant Gabriel Majur, who was reported to be a drug addict and alcoholic. Gatkoth's political career was marked by his leadership in the Southern Sudan Autonomous Region during a significant period. Unfortunately, his assassination brought an abrupt and violent end to his service. The incident occurred on August 26, 2010, adding him to the list of assassinated politicians in Africa during the 2010-S. The details surrounding Gatkoth's assassination were noted in news reports, including a Google search link that mentions a senior SPLA officer and 11 civilians being killed in separate murders in Ye. The reported involvement of soldiers in the murders led to arrests by the South Sudan Army. Robert Gwei. Robert Gwei was an Ivorian politician who served as the military ruler from the 24th of December 1999 to the 26th of October 2000. He also succeeded President Henri Conan Bédier after the 1999 Ivorian coup d'état and lost to Laurent Gbagbo in the 2000 Ivorian presidential election. On September 19, 2002, things went terrible in Côte d'Ivoire. An armed uprising happened, and the former president, General Robert Gay, along with his wife and children, got killed. Gay, who led a military takeover in 1999, ended up in a shootout near his house in Abidjan during the chaos. It all started at 4 a.m. when about 800 soldiers rebelled, upset about being kicked out of the army. Dressed in regular clothes and military gear, they started shooting like crazy in Abidjan, making everyone think a coup was happening. As the day went on, the loyal soldiers regained control of places the rebels had captured. Prime Minister Pascal Afi Negesan tried to handle things while the streets of Abidjan were empty and loyal soldiers set up roadblocks. The airport closed and flights had to go somewhere else. President Laurent Gbagbo, who took over after Gué, was away in Italy. 
His assistant said Gwe caused all this, but Gwe's people in Abidjan said that wasn't true. After September 19th, Côte d'Ivoire was left in a mess and things didn't calm down for a while. Juvenile Habyarimana. On April 6th, 1994, a tragedy struck as Juvenile Habyarimana's private Falcon 50 jet was shot down near Kigali International Airport, resulting in his assassination. Juvenal Habyarimana served as the president of Rwanda from 1973 until his murder in 1994. The circumstances surrounding the crash remain unclear to this day, fueling speculation and controversy. The assassination occurred amidst a backdrop of escalating tensions in Rwanda. In 1990, the Tutsi-led Rwandan Patriotic Front initiated the Rwandan civil war against Habyarimana's government. After three years of conflict, Habyarimana signed the Arusha Accords in 1993 with the RPF as a peace agreement. However, ethnic tensions persisted and Habyarimana's sudden death exacerbated the already volatile situation. The plane crash, caused by a surface-to-air missile, also claimed the life of Cyprien Intariamira, the president of Burundi, and numerous others. The Hutu power media claimed the plane had been shot down on orders from RPF leader Paul Kagame. Other than that, the RPF and others accused militant Hutus from within Habyarimana's party of orchestrating the crash to provoke anti-Tutsi sentiments while seizing power. In the aftermath of Habyarimana's assassination, the country plunged into chaos and the genocide against the Tutsi began within hours. If you've enjoyed this video so far, take a moment and hit that subscribe button because we bring the best content for you guys here. Laurent Désiré Kabila. Kabila, the third president of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, also met a tragic end as he was assassinated on January 16, 2001. Kabila was shot in his office at the Palais de Marbre, and the exact circumstances remain contested. DRC's authorities managed to keep power despite Kabila's assassination. Conflicting reports surround his death, with some asserting that he died on the spot, while the government claimed he was still alive when he was transported to Zimbabwe for medical treatment. The Congolese government officially announced Kabila's death on January 18, 2001. His body was returned to Congo for a state funeral, and his son, Joseph Kabila, succeeded him as president 10 days later. The transfer of power was reportedly in accordance with Laurent Désiré Kabila's verbal testimony, where he expressed that his son Joseph should take over in case of his demise. The investigation into Kabila's assassination led to a trial involving 135 individuals, including the alleged ringleader, Colonel Eddie Kapend, one of Kabila's cousins. In January 2003, Kapend and 25 others were sentenced to death, but the sentences were not executed. Others faced imprisonment ranging from six months to life. Doubts persist regarding the fairness of the trial with claims of innocence among the convicted defendants. But in a twist, in January 2021, DRC's President Felix Tshisekedi pardoned all those convicted in the murder of Laurent Désiré Kabila. Colonel Eddie Kapend and his co-defendants, who had been incarcerated for 15 years, were also released. Abeid Amani Karume. Abeid Amani Karume was the first president of Zanzibar. He got this position after a revolution that forced Sir Jamshid bin Abdullah to leave his position as the Sultan of Zanzibar. Throughout his presidency, it said that there was a silent power struggle that he continued to be a part of. He also declared John Okello, the former field marshal of Zanzibar, an enemy of the state. Karume even formed a union with Tanganyikan president Julius Nyerere in April 1964. This union was what formed the country of Tanzania. 
The main motive behind this union was to ensure the new country wouldn't align itself with the communist bloc or the Soviet Union, an idea that A.M. Babu had advocated. But apparently, Babu was marginalized to the point where he was forced to flee Zanzibar and was later even accused of being the mastermind behind Karume's assassination. Karume's life came to a tragic end on April 7, 1972, when he was assassinated in Zanzibar town at the age of 66. The assassination took place at the headquarters of the Afro-Shirazi party while Karume was engaged in a game of bow. As per the news reports, four gunmen carried out the attack, fatally shooting Karume. The repercussions were swift, with reprisals unfolding against individuals suspected of opposing Karume's regime. It's said that the circumstances surrounding his assassination and the identity of the assailants may have been politically motivated. Melchior in Dadai. Melchior and Dadai was a Burundian banker and politician who became Burundi's first democratically elected and first Hutu president in 1993. Despite efforts to bridge ethnic divides, his reforms angered Tutsi-dominated army soldiers, leading to his assassination three months into his presidency. This event triggered violent clashes between Tutsi and Hutu ethnic groups, escalating into the Burundi Civil War. Ndadaye was born in 1953 and had a Hutu background. His early life involved fleeing to Rwanda during the 1972 Ikiza, targeting and massacring educated Hutus. He returned to Burundi in 1983, engaging in politics and founding the Front for Democracy in 1986. In 1993, Ndadaye won the presidential election with Frodebu's support. His victory surprised many, and concerns arose about potential army intervention. As president, he aimed to create a new Burundi, making reforms that threatened the Tutsi elite and army. Ethnic tensions, economic challenges, and issues with the military marked his presidency. On October 21, 1993, a failed military coup led to the assassination of Ndadai. Despite warnings of a coup, he returned to the presidential palace where putschists attacked. Ndadai was killed and buried, and the failed coup triggered a violent aftermath. The subsequent investigations implicated the army command in Ndadai's assassination and complicity in massacres. While some were sentenced to death or imprisonment, high-ranking officials, including Ndadai's predecessor Pierre Bouyoya, faced suspicions but were not directly implicated. He's posthumously honored in Burundi as a democracy martyr and national hero, with Indadai Day observed annually on October 21st. Marien Nguabi. Marien Nguabi took office on January 1st, 1969, starting a turbulent presidency marked by ideological shifts and internal conflicts. Nuwabi's rise to power was fueled by discontent within the military, leading to the formation of the National Revolutionary Council and a shift towards Marxism-Leninism. As head of state, Nuwabi faced opposition due to his centralization of power, tribal biases, and a repressive regime. The 1972 coup attempt triggered purges of the opposition, causing further instability. Suspicions of foreign interference, especially French pressure related to the oil-rich Cabinda enclave, complicated his rule. However, Nguabi's political journey came to an abrupt end on March 18, 1977, when he was assassinated. The circumstances surrounding his murder were unclear, and those implicated faced trials, with some being executed, including Masamba Deba. Cyprian Antariamira. Cyprian Antariamira faced many ups and downs during their political journey during his brief time in office from February 5, 1994, until his untimely death on April 6, 1994. Antariamira's political involvement, 
started with the socialist Burundi Workers' Party, which he co-founded in 1979. Returning to Burundi in 1983, he worked in agriculture and briefly faced imprisonment for his political activities. In 1986, he played a key role in founding the Front for Democracy in Burundi. The turning point came in 1993 with Burundi's first democratic elections, followed by an attempted coup in October that claimed the lives of the president and other officials. Entari Amira, surviving the coup, was elected president in January 1994. His presidency aimed to bring peace, uphold human rights, and address refugee issues amid escalating ethnic conflicts. However, his attempts to end violence, disband militias, and impose an arms embargo faced challenges and were proved ineffective. The end of Intari Amira's story occurred on April 6, 1994, when the plane he shared with Rwandan President Juvenal Habyarimana was shot down over Kigali. The circumstances surrounding the attack remain unclear, with speculations ranging from Hutu extremists to Rwandan rebel leader Paul Kagame. Intari Amira's assassination left a leadership vacuum in Burundi. Despite concerns of widespread violence, Burundi remained relatively calm after Intari Amira's death, unlike the horrors unfolding in neighboring Rwanda. Cyprian Intari Amira's body was heavily mutilated in the crash and was buried on the grounds of the presidential palace. His death is commemorated annually in the country, although public memory often emphasizes the Rwandan genocide, overshadowing his tragic assassination. Silvanus Olympio. Silvanus Olympio was a Togolese politician who significantly impacted his country's struggle for independence. Olympio's political career surged when the 1958 elections saw his cut party triumph. And after becoming Togo's prime minister, he navigated challenges from French authorities and advocated for independence. In 1961, Togo voted for Olympio as its first president, cementing his role in the country's political scenario. Internationally, Olympio pursued a policy connecting Togo with Britain, the United States, and Western Bloc countries. However, domestically, he faced opposition and criticism. He maintained austere spending, especially in the military, initially advocating for no military force post-independence. His presidency also witnessed the consolidation of power with opposition parties outlawed after an attempt on his life in 1961. However, all of this came to an end on January 13, 1963, when Olympio was assassinated during the first coup d'etat in the French and British colonies in Africa that had achieved independence in the 1950s and 1960s. Olympio's family remained in exile until democratic openings in the late 20th century. Anwar Sadat. Anwar Sadat's last months as Egypt's president were troubled by internal unrest. He dismissed claims that domestic issues were behind the riots, instead believing the Soviet Union was trying to incite an uprising through its allies in Libya and Syria. After a failed military coup in June 1981, Sadat cracked down on opposition figures. Earlier in his presidency, Islamists had gained from reforms and releases from prison, but the peace treaty with Israel angered radical groups, particularly the Egyptian Islamic Jihad. This group, led by Abu al-Zumar, planned to overthrow the government by targeting key leaders and strategic locations. The Egyptian authorities got wind of El Jihad's plan in February 1981, but failed to capture a cell led by Lieutenant Khalid Islambouli during a crackdown in September. Contrary to some claims, Tala at Qasim of the Islamic group insisted that his organization orchestrated the assassination. Islambouli, recruited by the Islamic group, assassinated Sadat on October 6, 1981, during a victory parade in Cairo. Sadat was fatally wounded. Eleven others, including the Cuban ambassador and a Coptic Orthodox bishop, 
also lost their lives. Apart from that, 28 individuals, including Vice President Hosni Mubarak and foreign officials, were injured. Abdi Rashid Ali Sharmak. Ali Sharmak was the former president of Somalia. In 1968, he narrowly survived an attempt on his life. A grenade exploded near the car, transporting him from the airport, but he managed to escape unharmed. But you know when it's the end, you can't escape death. So, on October 15, 1969, during an official visit to the northern town of Lassenod, Sharmark was assassinated. The assailant turned out to be one of his own bodyguards. While on duty outside the guest house where the president was staying, the officer fired an automatic rifle at close range, fatally injuring Sharmark. Observers believed that the motive behind the assassination was more personal than political. Following Sharmark's assassination, a military coup unfolded on October 21, 1969, just one day after his funeral. The Somali army orchestrated the takeover, and notably, it occurred without encountering armed resistance, making it essentially a bloodless coup. Major General Mohamed Siad Barre, who was in command of the army at that time, spearheaded the coup d'etat. Ali Soili. Ali Soili was the third president of the Comoros and kept this position from 1976 to 1978. On May 13, 1978, Soili was removed from power in a swift operation orchestrated by a group of 50 mercenaries. These individuals from former French paratroopers hired by Ahmed Abdallah the exiled former leader, were under the command of French Colonel Bob Denard. In just a matter of hours, you can say, these highly skilled and experienced French fighters effortlessly overcame a much larger force loyal to Soily, achieving their goal with no casualties. During the coup, Colonel Bob Denard forcibly entered Soily's bedroom. To his surprise, he discovered Soily in bed with three nude teenage schoolgirls. The group was reportedly watching an explicit film while influenced by marijuana. Denard later characterized Soily as stupid, emphasizing the significant effort required to make him comprehend the situation. After this, Abdallah became the president while Soile was on house arrest. Apparently, on May 29th, he tried to escape house arrest and was shot and killed. William Tolbert. William Tolbert, a Liberian president, was born on May 13, 1932. He served as the 20th president of Liberia from 1971 until his death in 1980. His tenure was marked by several issues, including economic turmoil, which led to several uprisings. In one such case, his palace was overtaken by rebel forces who killed Tolba in a very dehumanizing way, dumping his body into a mass grave, along with 27 other people. Accounts of his death also suggest that he was sleeping in his office at the time of his assassination. Angry Liberians also surrounded the grave, raging with anger and pelted stones at the body of the president. And with that, we are done for today. Let us know in the comments about what you think of the video. We will be back with more such videos soon.